MLK. He's on deck now. Hood rich bitch. Hood rich. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I have a blogger here from iHaveAblogger.com. We're live at ASU Water Concrete School of Journalism in downtown Phoenix. Got a special guest with me in the building. My man Slater Black. Yo, what's up? How you doing, what's sir? Chilling, bro. Now, for yeah. some of you guys who don't know, me and actually Slater Black, we did an interview in 2016 that first Friday. Yeah. Um, I just want to catch up on some things. So, like I said, for the fans that don't know, um, we did our first interview last year, back in 2016. But obviously, things have changed after a year. How you been, man? Uh, progression, bro. Living, really. Hell yeah. Just pure music, 24/7. Nice. All. That's all I could really say. That's I, all my life revolves around. So. I feel like you matured since then, cause uh, the yeah, first yeah, interview yeah. we did, it was it was cool, it was fun. But like now, you're more you're getting more serious about your your craft. I like that about you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people are noticing that. They kind of they're kind of seeing it. Plus, I turned. I think it's because of the fact that I turned twenty in like two months too. Okay. So it's kind of like I'm already gearing up for the you know the, the mentality, uh, the, yeah. the mind state, really. I feel you, man. So. That's what's up. Now, um, for my first interview, you mentioned that you knew Teddy Oso when I had interviewed him. Yeah, yeah, I know him. I know him. I know him. Have y'all <laughs> seen each other ever since or like, talked uh, ever since? To be honest, nah, not really, no. Nah. You just, like, know of him and stuff? Yeah, yeah, just, you know. Just the homie? I got you. Um, now, you said you started freestyling at the age of five? Yeah, five. You like, got, can you explain that? All right, so... <laughs> That's so, incredible. Like, I want to say maybe, like, round four or five... I can like if I have visual representation. Uh, I remember like we used to live in San Bernardino, California. Mm -hmm. So, like we lived with like you know uh, some friends or whatever. So like they would have me just spit just out of nowhere, just cause I was the kid who knew every song on the radio. So like that was just one of the things I could do. I knew every single song on the radio, just cause that's how much I love music. It was just constant. But, like, I would just spit, just freestyle, whatever. Right. I never wrote anything until I turned, what, 12. My mom bought me my first composition book, and that's where I just laid all my thoughts down. But I went to the studio for the first time at 11, mm -hmm. and that's where, like, being around that environment, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. So, and that was also in San Bernardino, too. That was in Cali. So when we came back uh, to Phoenix, um... I hopped on Facebook and was just doing like freestyle videos. And that was before I even got, I can get into a studio. And then I didn't get into a studio until I was like 15. And that's when I started recording my first recordings and making my first records. Mm -hmm. And then so on and so forth. So Do you feel like it's history. a blessing or a curse for like a young man to be on social media at an early age? Could you just mention that you was 11 when you got on Facebook and started making videos? Um, I feel like because for parents, they don't want their kids seeing certain things It's pros online. and cons. It's pros and cons, yeah. for sure. It depends on how you balance it, because I was wilding on Facebook, too. So. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, I also used it to my advantage mm -hmm. because of the era I'm in. So it's like the era of social media, right. the era of technology. So I was like, all right, well, I got a phone. I got an app where I can record. I can get download beats on my phone. Let's get it cracking. So <laughs> that's basically what I did. I just kind of took advantage of the technology. Now, um, 2016, you had an indie label called Live Great, Die Awesome. Is yeah, that still yeah, around? Still now? Yeah, still, we still okay. going. I think we're actually doing better than we were that year before. Nice. Like, we have a uh, we have like Will Be the Great. We got a uh, Laura Raw, Anime J, Kyoto at Night. You know what I mean? I, we added we added a couple more to the roster. So, yeah. You know, now it's just. Um, at the point where we're developing ourselves. Because it wasn't, at first it was like, all right, Slater Black, and then you have Laura and uh, Live Great, I mean, Will Be the Great. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, Will Be the Great's gearing up to drop his album, Anime, Jay dropped like a a, a small EP. Um, Kyoto at Night, which is a producer of ours, he dropped some stuff. He's been dropping stuff like all year. And then uh, myself is, you know, dropping, dropping Black for Ronin, and then. Lord Raw is gearing up to, you know, work on some stuff, too. He's actually doing videos now, so, like, he's just uh, kind of branching out and venturing into new things. Right. So, I basically, what we're just doing is just, like I said before, just establishing at this point, just really establishing ourselves, trying to make that name, trying to make that niche, 
and give ourselves that lane instead of trying to be on somebody else's way. Are y'all a group or a label? You would say? Uh, it's a group, but it's like a label. Like okay, I got you. So just kind of like even with like Black for Ronin, it's not necessarily an album. Mm -hmm. Like every project I treat it like an album because it's that important. How many artists are are you guys? Um, I was in the group? I would say like six or seven of us right now. How do y'all maintain different personalities? Because somebody might be it's quiet, definitely, somebody might be always lit, somebody might be just, you know. Um, and that's the thing <laughs> about us is that, uh, like, we all have different uh, different things to bring to the table. Right. So it's not, you get, like, certain groups where they all have a certain sound because all artists are similar, mm -hmm. and we're nothing like that. Whereas each artist has their own particular sound own particular way own particular way of doing things right and making and making music and i said in an interview before um was that like that's a reason why we don't drop songs all the time because every record we make is going to be 131 percent put into and it's like timeless music for us and we actually we cherish that a lot like a lot like we don't just throw out records just to throw out a record like yeah. we're just going to we gon we gon make this song. It's gon you gonna rock with it for like for a minute. You know what I mean? Forever, if that. So, you know that's how confident we are in ourselves at that point. Yeah, it's good that you have that mindset while you're young. You yeah. know, timeless music because you don't hear that clearly nowadays. Right. Exactly. It's really sad. Um, now you got a, a like you know small labels like Quality Control, QC. You got Migos, yeah. Lil Yachty, and all them. It's kind of the same thing how you mentioned, like, you know, y'all have different lanes, which makes it better for y'all, because Quavo, he's like a melodic singer, then Offset right. and Takeoff, they're rappers, but they have different styles of rap. Yeah. Lil Yachty is, like, kind of like a ABC rhymer. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, Dead Eyes. No, yeah, no, it's true, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, I kind of understand that. Like, it kind of does help, you know, when you guys have different um, types of ways to yeah. complement the song, if you will. Exactly, especially on a creative <laughs> tip. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I might learn something from... You know, the homie that I never really, you know what I mean, knew before, yeah. and vice versa. So it's definitely a, a, a convenient thing. For sure. And then um, you mentioned, I think you said his name is Lord Ross? Yeah, Lord Ross. He had a yeah. uh, you, um, Last year, you said, I think he had a, a, a project called Happy? Oh, Stay Happy. Stay yeah, Happy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You didn't want to mention that, or he didn't want to mention that? Uh, it's because it didn't, dro it didn't uh, at that time, it, it was about to drop. Oh, okay. So How's I don't it going know now? if you wanted to keep it a secret or not. I just said <laughs> it anyway, just to give my man's, uh, you know, the hype, I guess. But For real? It dropped that, it dropped that May, and um, it was pretty cool. The response is cool. I mean, mm -hmm. he's only like, what, he's 17 now? So he was oh, like he 15, you. 16 then. So it's like the response he got was tight. Mm hmm being for his age because i remember when i dropped my first tape at like 15 16. so now you got your mom right here on the side off the camera yeah um <laughs> i see a lot of artists when they first blow up they have the momager the mom she's yeah. like the manager are y'all on the same thing or are you nah. doing your own thing no <laughs> no nah, she's just mad supportive okay what it is does she know about the industry like at all uh not not too much no not, not no major knowledge on the industry like that so how did you grow up on hip hop? Like, it was it your like people around you, just the radio? Like, when, my mom? mom? Yeah, yeah. My mom, like, <laughs> she's all right. I'm gonna be honest. Like, she she didn't listen to super super rap, mm -hmm. like a bunch of rap, but she listened to a lot of like West Coast Bay Area, some Southern. And stuff. you said you're from San Bernardino, right? So no, I'm from I'm from Westside Phoenix, oh. but I lived in San Bernardino. Okay, so, so like that's like second home. Yes, yeah, but so um. I was gonna say because you had um, audio push, you got uh, you know YG, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. all those people in Compton. Exactly. Is that close to San Bernardino or not? Yeah, really? yeah, that's like that's like a like forty five minutes away. Yeah, that's not too far. That's what's up, man. Um, you think you can handle fame at an early age if it happens? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying overnight success, no, but, yeah, but but if you're nice with it, you know you're gonna get recognition. It's gonna take a while, but you might get recognition. What was crazy than you about it was like. When I dropped my first mixtape, Chase ninety eight, mm -hmm. um, that's like one. Of, it it was one of those things that I wanted because I was looking at like artists at the time, like Joey Badass when he first came out mm -hmm. at like seventeen, and artists like Bishop and Rue and all that stuff. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to go on tour. By the time I'm like a senior in high school, so I was like, all right, 
that's what happened with um with Khalid. He's like exactly. 19 right now. Exactly. Blew, blew, I don't want to cuss, but he blew the F up. Like. No, yeah, <laughs> I definitely I definitely wanted to explore that at a young age. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, knowing that it's going to come. Now, I mean, I'm 19. I'm still young, so it's not like, you know, time is running out. I got a lot, a lot of time. Now, you told me off camera this, but I'm asking you again on camera. What are you looking forward to within the end of this year, 2017, and then going into next year? In 2017, I really just want to keep uh, locked in the studio and really just, you know, remain focused. Right. Because I'm in a groove. I'm really in a groove. I'm not even going to lie to myself. Um, I'm really in a groove. 2018, I just want to be established. Mm-hmm. I want to keep the ball rolling. You know what I mean? Not only myself as Slater Black, the artist, but LGDA as the group. You know what I mean? I want to live great to really be cemented in everyone's mental to where every time you, you know, you listen, it's like, okay, this is, this is it. This is, this is what I've been looking for. This is, this is everything I, I've been wanting out nice. of music in 2018. Like, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where, where I'm at with it. I feel like you have a plan because, like, most people, oh, yeah. they blow up and they, they don't know what to do with the fame. They don't know how right. to take advantage of it and turn fame into money. Like that saying, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Right. So it's like when you blow up, which I'm hoping for you know, you can have everything established. Like, you have your plan already set. Yeah. As long as you, you know, put God first and then just stay consistent. Because right. I've been consistent and, you know, got me here. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, you be creative and you always find the opportunities, prepare for everything. Because you never know who's in the next room watching you. Or not watching, but who's in the next room, you know? Facts, yeah, for but sure. But that's good, though, man. Um, I, You know, I, I wish you keep grinding nothing but the best. Um, You have Thank any you, future man. or mixtapes you want to shout out or... Let the audience know about. Um, like as like what like, just like, any songs coming out soon. Um, SoundCloud. BFR Blackfoot Ronin coming very very soon. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty much <laughs> it. Just Blackfoot Ronin is on the way, man. Very soon, like sooner than you really think. That's what's up. You know what I, mean? I ain't gonna lie, like um, this is the first interview I did with a parent in the room. Y'all can't see her because she's off camera, but I feel actually better for some reason because it makes me, like I told you off camera, like it makes me look. Like, people take me more serious yeah, and you yeah. got professionalism, I right. guess, in a sense. Um, how do you feel about keeping her away from, like, your personal... Not her, but, like, how do I say it? It's like, um, you're going to have girls. I'm going to just be honest <laughs> with you. When, you. when you get famous, like, oh, yeah. how would you kind of separate your personal life and then your professional life as a rapper? Um, again, social media plays already. Like, a lot of people don't know a lot about me. And when they do, like, even my friends, like... Yeah. I don't talk much, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't say a lot of things about my personal life, and if I do, I put it in my music. So when they listen to my music, they're like, oh, I never knew that about you. You know what I mean? That's how it always goes. Yeah, I feel and you. And I feel like that's, it works for me, because, you know, I don't really have to explain anything. It's in the music, you know what I'm saying? Facts. It's literally in the music. I don't have to explain You got to listen to it, because people just skin through it. They exactly, yeah. Listen to it. That's why I, I, I kind of, like, go so hard with with what I'm saying, I mm-hmm. make sure that everything I'm saying is 100% true, and I'm not a uh, not sugarcoating anything, but um, keeping it keeping it away from you know separating uh, personal, personal life, life from you know rapper life. life or whatever. It's it's not hard. I don't know why a lot of artists tend to <laughs> mess up in that area in the gray area. Yeah, it's not hard. You just really have to learn how to maneuver. You, know, you have to learn how to be professional. That's the real the thing. Same, yeah, I feel you. You know what I mean? You have to learn how to be professional. You, uh, What did Gucci Mane say? Don't get lost in the sauce. Hell yeah. So. Now, I know we um, covered some good information, um, but I got to, to go back to the parking meter. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you want me to cover that I didn't cover yet? Uh, oh, you want to do a part two? I mean, we can, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part one. I'm a blogger, Slater Black, his mother. And the side, we are here at ASU Watson Cronkite School of Journalism. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash The Al Joshua Show. Check out my website, alzablogger.com. I'm out. Peace.